Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to what's making news today, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And it was another unseasonably hot day as we look down from South Lakeshore at Lake Chelan and lots of blue sky with just a few high clouds out there today. A bit of a breeze at times as well. Not too many boats out this afternoon, even though it was a warm day, but it's going to get a lot warmer. We have some very hot days ahead and they will begin not so much tomorrow. Tomorrow, a lot like today, near 100 on Friday, about 106 Saturday, Sunday and Monday. We're talking highs 110 to 115. And by the time we get into Tuesday and even Wednesday, temperatures still record setting. And we'll talk more about this historic heat wave coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories that we're following for you tonight. A 34-year-old California hiker who suffered a knee injury had to be rescued early yesterday morning in the Enchantments. A gravel spill on Highway 2 at Kashmir blocked both westbound lanes for about an hour yesterday afternoon. And Pangborn Memorial Airport in East Wenatchee will receive a $1.37 million airport rescue grant through the federal government. But first, our top story tonight in what was initially reported as a structure fire at the Wenatchee Valley Museum and Cultural Center yesterday, or I should say this morning, turned out to be paper smoldering inside a heat press in the basement of the building. Fire District Public Information Officer Kay McKellar said the heat press is used for making posters and similar items. Documents burning inside the press filled a room with smoke just after 8 a.m. McKellar said firefighters removed the 50-pound heat press from the building on Mission Street, spent about 30 minutes ventilating the room before turning it back over to museum staff. A 34-year-old California hiker who suffered a knee injury had to be rescued early yesterday morning in the Enchantments. Jeremy Freeman of Eureka was about a half mile below Colchuck Lake when he signaled for help Monday just after 7 p.m. A Chelan County volunteer search and rescue crew responded on foot and then used a litter to carry Freeman about three and a half miles down to the trailhead, which they reached at about 5.30 a.m. on Tuesday. Freeman was transported to Cascade Medical Center in Leavenworth. A gravel spill on Highway 2 at Kashmir blocked both westbound lanes for about an hour yesterday afternoon. Washington State Patrol Trooper John Bryant said about 20 yards of gravel were spilled onto the highway just after 1 p.m. Westbound traffic was directed onto the shoulder of the highway during that cleanup. Chelan County Public Works says the gravel spill at milepost 110 was not connected to the nearby Goodman Bridge replacement project. Pangborn Memorial Airport in East Wenatchee will receive $1.37 million airport rescue grant through the federal government. Washington Senator Maria Cantwell yesterday announced $217 million in grants being awarded to Washington airports as part of the government's COVID-19 recovery funding. Throughout the country, more than $7 billion is being provided to airports that were especially hard hit when the pandemic shut down or limited most air travel. The Kashmir Dryden Air Facility will receive $22,000, Afreda Municipal Airport $32,000, and Grant County International Airport in Moses Lake $32,000. SeaTac, by the way, the state's busiest airport, will receive $175 million. Coming up next, the State Department of Health says it will be concentrating its vaccination efforts more on areas of the state where vax rates remain low. The Chelan Douglas Health District will offer a COVID-19 vaccine clinic coming up on Saturday, June 26th. And saying she has ties to eco-terrorism, U.S. Representative Dan Newhouse called on President Biden to rescind the nomination of Tracy Stone Manning to lead the Bureau of Land Management. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Somewhere behind these doors is a family member, often alone, taking care of a loved one with Alzheimer's or some other disability, or providing care for a loved one who is not ill, but only aging and no longer able to care for themselves. In the field of caregiving, this is the home front. 
for the home is where most Americans will live out their last days. Contact Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington for a variety of services, including caregiving, meals, and medication help. Introducing Alpine Airman. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high-efficiency carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. Hi, this is Brian Snyder with Black Rock Asphalt Services here in Wenatchee, your local Black Rock Seal Coat company. Have you looked at your driveway or parking lot lately? Is it gray and oxidized? Does it have cracks that have not been taken care of? Or do you have striping that is pretty much non-existent? Please give us a call locally here, 509-665-9769. Learn more at blackrockasphaltsealcoating.com. Welcome back. And in other news, as Washington moves toward a full reopening at the end of the month, State Secretary of Health Umar Shah said this morning his department will be concentrating its efforts more on areas of the state where vaccination rates remain lower than a, a low rather than a percentage goal for the entire state. The state as a whole is at 68% of the population vaccinated, but Chelan County is at about 55% and Douglas County still below 50%. I think the key message from us, um, especially as we're shifting to this stage of the pandemic, is really getting to those uh, people that are still harder to reach and uh, gaps that may be across the state. And so while we're looking at a percentage overall at uh, across the state of uh, 70% or higher, we're certainly also mindful of two or three things. One is we're mindful of that we may have uh, kids who are under the age of 12 who are gonna become eligible. So we're gonna have to really think about that and focus on that effort when the vaccine eligibility is there. Number two is that if at some point boosters are in the mix, uh, we're gonna have to be thinking about that as well. And then the third thing is that geographically and within pockets or groups of people uh, across the state of Washington, if we're seeing particular gaps, we certainly want to do everything we can to work with those partners on the ground to really help support their efforts and to continue to also encourage people to get vaccinated in those communities. So I'm not sure it's a, a true percentage that we're looking at as we get into this, you know, this stage or this phase of the pandemic, but it's really trying to continue to look at where we're seeing particular gaps uh, geographically or sociodemographically and really try to address those. I think that's going to be the key message for us moving forward and not as much about a percentage. Well, speaking of vaccinations, Chelan Douglas Health District will offer a COVID-19 vaccine clinic coming up on Saturday, June 26th. The CDHD will administer the one-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine to anyone 18 years of age and older, and that will be held at the Health District office at 200 Valley Mall Parkway in East Wenatchee. Pre-registration is not required and walk-ins are welcome. For more information, visit www.cdhd.wa.gov. A similar clinic was held earlier today at the, in, in Wenatchee at the Chamber of Commerce Job Fair. Well, saying she has ties to eco-terrorism, U.S. Representative Dan Newhouse called on President Biden to rescind the nomination of Tracy Stone Manning to lead the Bureau of Land Management. Since being nominated by Biden, several news sources have reported on a profanity-laced letter Stone Manning sent to federal officials in 1989, warning that spikes had been inserted into trees in an Idaho forest in an effort to stop a logging project. The spiking of trees involves inserting rods into trunks, making them extremely, extremely dangerous to cut. Newhouse said her nomination sends a quote, distressing signal to rural communities, unquote. Former BLM director Bob Abbey, who served under President Obama, said Stone Manning's involvement with the tree spiking incident should disqualify her from that post. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. 
Please stay with us. According to new statistics from the FTC, Washington consumers lost nearly $69 million to fraud in 2020, more than double the amount lost in 2019. Con artists are becoming even more sophisticated in their tactics, and new scams are emerging at an increasing pace. AARP is offering a free online class, Tip-Offs to Rip-Offs. Learn how to protect yourself and your community. Sign up for the virtual class today at aarp.org forward slash Wenatchee Tip-Offs. Your search for quality patio furniture with excellent customer service is over. Blue Lagoon is proud to offer only the finest outdoor furniture and accessories from some of the most renowned manufacturers in the industry. Our showroom showcases a large selection of in-stock furniture, fire pits, umbrellas, cushions, and outdoor accessories. Our in-house outdoor decor specialist is available to help you design and custom order the perfect furniture for your unique space. I'm John Divis from Wenatchee Dental Arts, and I like to think myself as a comprehensive dentist. We are an office that treats people comprehensively for their dental problems. We do a lot of general dentistry in a broad sense. We don't send everything out. Uh, things that we have the ability to do in the office, we like to keep in the office and under one roof and keep things as complication-free as possible. You can come to one place and have all their dental needs taken care of. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, plenty of jobs are available in the Wenatchee Valley as witnessed today at a job fair at the Wenatchee Convention Center. The job fair was sponsored by the Wenatchee Valley Chamber of Commerce and Downtown Wenatchee Association and drew employers from a wide variety of fields. We talked with some of the particip uh, participants about what they're looking for. We are looking for all positions actually, between kitchen, bar, and casino, also accounting. Um, pretty much all positions are open right now. We are doing dealer's training. We're also doing uh, kitchen training, bartending, um, pretty much anything you can think of in the restaurant service business and casino. We really need some people right now. Classified staff, yeah. um, educators, custodial staff, bus drivers, desperate need of bus drivers. Um, and you train bus drivers? Right? We do, yep, we do. We, training, we yep. do paid training for bus drivers. We're getting ready to start a new class here shortly so that we can have new drivers trained for the start of school. And I, I would be happy if, you know, because we're in the middle of a training right now. Okay, so when I order, right now we have 10 vacant positions, so we, 10, so we are definitely in need to hire telecommunicators, which is dispatching and call taking, uh, for 911, we cover both Shillan and Douglas County, um, dispatch and take call for um, both counties and dispatch fire, law and EMS, so um, the position, it has really good benefits, it, good pay. Um, we do all the in-house training, so on-the-job training, so once you hire then you get the training into the training program and uh, it takes about six months and then you on your own working on a console. I'm looking towards an IT job or technical sort of field, I should say. What are we looking for? We're looking for salespeople. We're, we're a growing software company, and you know we're, we sell to gyms all around the world. We're looking for people who want to talk to gym operators and help them get going with software that will make their gyms more awesome. Time now to take a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast as we get to the end of June now, but it's feeling more like the end of July and 1st of August out there right now. This beautiful shot looking down at the Wenatchee Valley and boy, it was another unseasonably hot one out there today with just a few high clouds and 
Good day to be on the Columbia River if you were lucky enough to have the day off, although we did see some breezy to even windy conditions in some locations today. But it, as I mentioned, did get hot out there once again, unofficially 95 degrees. We were 96 yesterday. 80 is our normal high temperature, so once again, way above normal. 70, our low temperature this morning, 56 is normal. Record high, it was a hot one in 1992 at 105 degrees. Record low, 46, and that was in 2009. Sun rise this morning, 5.05, and the sun sets tonight at 9.02. Let's take a look at your Thursday weather forecast and really almost an exact carbon copy of today. Maybe some less high cloud out there, but temperatures certainly right in the ballpark. 96s for the Columbia Basin and Moses Lake and Afreda. A little bit cooler in Quincy at 95. You can call that cooler. 95 in Wenatchee. Cool spot tomorrow will be up in Lake Wenatchee with a high of 89 degrees. And if you don't like hot weather, you better get out there tomorrow because we're warming up. Tonight, mostly clear skies, still a little bit breezy. Winds will be out of the northwest 10 to 20 miles an hour, and it's going to be another warm one, probably in the mid-60s tonight with overnight lows. As we get you to Thursday, we talked about just a little bit of breeze for Thursday. Not quite as breezy as today, and we'll still be unseasonably hot once again with high temperatures again in the mid 90s tomorrow about 15 degrees above where we should be as we get you into the weekend this is where we could see this historic heat wave that's moving in uh, right there the historic heat wave begins 100 degrees is possible on Friday that would be a record Saturday certainly record-breaking heat where we could be 105 to 110 degrees all over Washington even Seattle will see about 90 degrees for Sunday, it's even going to get a little bit hotter. More record-breaking heat. We're thinking about 109 degrees for our high on Sunday. And then as we get into Monday, this is where things really get interesting. All-time record highs are possible under sunny skies on Monday. We are considering highs between 110 and 115 on Monday. And if you were wondering, there's our all-time high in Wenatchee, 110 set back in 1941. Spokane could reach that. Winthrop as well as OMAC, who reached 110 degrees back in 2015. So 112 would break that record. And as we move into Tuesday, we're not going to see a whole lot of change. All-time record still possible with high temperatures on Tuesday once again between 110 and 115. Look at that deep red. We are going to be warmer than the desert southwest. Not much relief in sight for Wednesday either. Let's take a look at that seven day forecast. 68 overnight tonight. 95 a little bit breezy for Thursday. 72 the low. 100 on Friday. 106 Saturday. There it is, 109 on Sunday and 112 degrees possible on both Monday and for Tuesday. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Mary Maids of Wenatchee has been professionally cleaning and sanitizing homes and businesses in North Central Washington since 1998. Mary Maids uses commercial grade cleaners and virucides. Mary Maids has implemented additional safety and sanitation protocols. They are strictly following CDC guidelines for the safety of their clients and employees. For expert help with cleaning and sanitizing your home or business, call or look up Mary Maids of Wenatchee to schedule your free estimate today. Nice fish. Yeah, that's a beauty. We'll take that one. Whew. Oh boy, that hillside yeah, is steep. Work Sharp presents the Northwest Outdoorsman. Watch for new episodes of the Northwest Outdoorsman on the NCW Life Channel, your local TV station. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Wednesday to you. Shed Long Jr. has back-to-back game-winning home runs for Seattle after the Mariners beat the Rockies 2-1 last night at T-Mobile Park. Shed's long ball came in the eighth inning. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. First, Seattle broke through against Colorado starter Kyle Freeman in the fifth inning, breaking a scoreless tie. Another 3-2. Ground ball, and it is picked 
Long throw, Rodgers, headlock slot. He is safe. And now Dylan Moore trying to get around, and they get the tag on Dylan Murphy scores. Well, the Mariners got a run, but they wanted more. What happened here, Mike? Well, you can see this right here, and Dylan Moore, who's at first base, is running as Crawford Hustle dives into first. Doing everything he can to try to beat the play so that the run will score and it will. Then all of a sudden, Dylan was running. And he had to have his head down because he wasn't watching. Manny Acto will stop. Hold up the runner right here, which is Jake Fraley. And Dylan just keeps on running. And the next thing you know, he's standing right next to him. So the Rockies were able to get out of the inning on that play. So base running blunder there. Should have been a bigger inning. Meanwhile, Chris Flexen continued his impressive season on the mound for Seattle. He went into the seventh before allowing a solo home run to C.J. Crone. First strikeout tonight for Chris Flexen, who has retired the first four in order without breaking a sweat. Here comes Flexen's one-two. Cut on and missed as he dots 95, and Hampson cuts right through it. Bowers charges and will handle this himself. A low strikeout rate guy, Daza. Doesn't walk much, but doesn't strike out a whole lot. Until right now as he chases after an elevated 95-mile-an-hour heater. This will be pitch number 10, and he got him. And the Mariner lineup's a little left-handed. Flex it with a strikeout of Nunez. Chopping to Crawford. He's got it. On to first base. Plenty of time. And an inning ending double plays. Now Flexen has gotten Trevor Story now three times tonight. Seeger on to first. Couple of more ground ball outs. Yeah. Now Flexen will exit to a raucous round of applause as he pitches into the seventh. So as you see on the scoreboard there, the game was tied at 1-1 until the bottom of the eighth when Chet Long came on with one out. Shed out to center. Cannon shot. Way back. Gone. Well, he looked like he tried to hit a home first swing this time it's 95 miles an hour center cut he goes dead center 418 feet exit below 106 kind of appropriate that the 7,000th home run in Mariner history would be the game winner Kendall Graven came into the night for his sixth save of the season Seattle now has five straight wins manager Scott Service says the night started with flexing and ended with shed long jr. Chris Flexen, uh, again, I think, you know, he was rolling along. I think it was off 15 scoreless innings before he gave up the, the home run to Crone. But the heck of a job again tonight and really all season long. You know, you look at the games that he has pitched for us. Uh, I think we're 10 and three in those games that he starts. And like I, I've always said, you know, the starting pitcher's job is to give you a chance, give your ball club a chance to win. And he continues to do that. So a uh, really nice outing by him. Uh, our bullpen clean again. Uh, but Shed Long's got it rolling. Um, it's hard to hit a ball out the dead center here and know it's gone the minute you hit it. And he certainly got all of that one. So uh, not a ton offensively tonight. We, we scratched together four hits in that one inning and kind of ran ourselves out of a chance to get a little bit more. But uh, big hit again by Shed. And uh, again, clean ball game. Uh, just enough to, to get it done. Seattle and Colorado turned around for a day game today. They were down early. We'll get you results tomorrow morning on Wake Up with Edge Valley. Taking a look at the rest of the American League West last night, Zach Greinke pitched seven in the third innings in one run ball in Houston's 3-1 win at Baltimore. Miles Straw, two for four with a run and two RBIs to lead the Astros. Mark Canna, Ramon Laureano, and Elvis Andrich each had three hits and combined to drive in six of Oakland's runs and a 13-6 romp in Texas. San Francisco starter uh, Anthony Del Sclafini, Sclafani, there you go, a fan nine over seven innings in the Giants' 5 nothing win against the Angels in Anaheim. Turning to the West Coast League, Wenatchee took advantage of 16 walks and three errors to beat Cowlitz 8-5. to 
Those 16 walks have to be a record. I, we'll have to check the books for that. Big inning for Wenatchee came in the third when they brought nine men to the plate, scored two runs of its three in the inning on bases loaded walks. Andrew Grobe led the way for Wenatchee at the plate, two for four with two runs and an RBI. John Newman Jr. also collected, collected a couple of hits, a run and an RBI. Jared Ingham worked a uh, inning of relief for the win on the mound. Two teams go at it again tonight, Story Field and Longview. Trey Miller will make his first start of the season for the Apple Sox. South Carolina Upstate sophomore has pitched two innings so far this summer, allowed no runs, five hits, and a strikeout. Other West Coast League play uh, last night, uh, Taylor Holder and Noah Williams each hit uh, homers. Yakima Valley's 10-1 win at Ridgefield. Owen Wild pitched four and a third scoreless innings in relief to get the victory, striking out eight along the way. Julian Kadama was two for four with a home run to lead Bend over Bellingham at Joe Martin Field, six to two. R.J. Gordon pitched seven innings of two-run, three-hit ball for the Elks, striking out six and walking two. Uh, Tyson Corio broke a 4-4 tie in the top of the ninth with an RBI single, and Tanner Smith added an insurance run as Corvallis topped Portland 6-4. And in non-league play, Port Angeles won its third straight against non-league opponents, winning 11-5 over the Highline Bears. Justin Foles capped a comeback by Walla Walla at Burleski Stadium with a walk-off RBI single in the bottom of the ninth as the Sweets top Cascade Collegiate 5-4. Now coming up on the West Coast League schedule tonight, uh, what aren't you, of course, at Kellett's? You've got Yakima at uh, Ridgefield, Bellingham hosting Ben, Cascade Collegiate at Walla Walla, Highline of Port Angeles, the late game has Corvallis at Portland. Well, we mentioned the other day that high school sports somehow in our region able to fit in three seasons in 15 weeks only able to do so because of the availability of officials. Now, across the state and the nation, officials' shortages have become a real problem, which could result in future game cancellations. Cody Pregshaw is an assigner with the Washington Officials Association. He was at a job fair in Wenatchee today recruiting for the future. He says they barely got through the COVID-shortened season just a, a month ago. We got through this last season with about as half as much as we actually needed. I mean, that's every sport, baseball, basketball, football, volleyball. Um, you know, the advantage of joining, you can work one day a week, you can work two days a week. Uh, you can get paid weekly now um, through direct deposit uh, games. And that's different. You used to get paid at the end of the season. End of the season. Now it's now you can uh, you can really get paid uh, weekly. Um, you transfer the money through Arbiter Pay into your account. Um, usually, see it posted within a day after your game. We've got some basketball officials that uh, they work a lot, um, but they make uh, eight to ten thousand dollars in two and a half months. So, and it's if you do. A, multiple sports it's uh, you can make 15 to 20 grand there's actually officials in our area that do 15 to 20 grand on that now besides the potential money to be made Pregshot says there are other benefits as well we're automatically enrolled into NASA which is National Association of Sporting Officials uh, you get a few things out of that you get uh, rebates at Marriott hotels um, and as well as your card would get you into whole state tournaments in Washington State for free so uh, free exercise as well, uh, training's provided, uniform uh, is provided, um, you know, and it, it really goes year round. Um, even in the summer, there's a lot of uh, summer leagues that we do for the schools. If you're interested to find out more, call that number on your screen. It's 509-860-8713 or go to the website woa-officials.com. That's sports. Grant, back to you. Thanks a bunch, Eric. And now let's check in with Dan Coots for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thanks, Grant. Join me for a Thursday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. We'll have that scorching hot weather forecast. It's going to just bake everybody come the weekend. Also, it's Thursday, so we'll have a pause for a clause with our good friend Megan McPherson. And also, we'll be talking to our friends at the North Central Educational Services District. We'd love to visit with those folks. We had a chance to do that as well. We'll have that fascinating interview for you. It's going to be a busy Thursday. The way you want to start your day is live and local, and I get to do the honors for Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I'll see you at 7 a.m. on Thursday morning. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Dan, and that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us, and have a great night.
you have a fun or interesting video you'd like to see featured here on the NCW Life channel, it's easy. All you have to do is send us an email at newsphotos at ncwlife.com.